What's up guys, hope you're doing well and safe. Today's topic is an important one, which I myself wasn't sure what to look for when I was shopping for an AV receiver for this room. Now I know some people upgrade their AV receivers every time a new one comes out, but most of us have to budget and save up for that all important upgrade that hopefully plan to keep for a long time. Purchasing something with your hard earned money, you want to be sure you've considered everything before making that decision. Now that's why today we're going to take a closer look at five things to consider when shopping for an AV receiver. Now the first question that comes in mind is what's your budget? It is very important to know your budget and not just buy a receiver for the sake of owning something new or because one of your friends upgraded or bought one. You have to know what you're willing to spend even if it's high or low range receiver. If you're after something, they'll do the job and lower end budget receiver, you can kind of limit yourself with your choices. But on the other hand, if you don't have a budget, you'll end up so confused and end up frustrating both yourself and everyone, including in the process. I remember I was one of these guys and had no idea at the time what to look for. And I was asking so many questions to the sales guy that was helping me out at the time. I could see the frustration on his face and I'm sure my face was just as bad. The second thing to consider is how many HDMI inputs do you need? Now, this is just as important as asking the question of how many speaker channels do you need? And it's kind of the same principle. If you're either starting out or already own a 5.1 speaker system, you always make sure you get a 7.2 channel receiver just in case you add more in the future. So the HDMI inputs are the same while well, nowadays even entry level surround receivers are coming out with around five HDMI inputs. You might want to consider buying one that has more, that's for sure. I can think of at least five standard components such as your 4K player, a gaming console like I have the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch hooked up to my receiver in this room. Some of you guys might have the Xbox, possibly a PC or a laptop. Apple TV is another one, Nvidia Shield or Roku even, and the list goes on. If you have a lot of components, allow room for them as well as keep a spare or two just in case you purchase something new in the future. Since we're on the HDMI topic, I will also mention the front panel, the HDMI port will become very handy, especially if you have friends that kind of bring their gaming systems over to play games, etc. There had been so many scenarios where I accidentally disconnected things by pulling the receiver forward, trying to unplug and plug HDMI sources. Ah, uh, nightmares. And while we mentioned front panel, just have a quick look at what's available on the specific receiver as some people want that quick, easy feature. So conclusion to this is think about everything and anything you'll be connecting. Third thing to consider is AV power requirements for your speakers and stuff. Figuring out how much power you need from an AV receiver is tough partly because power rating can be misleading. You might find a great receiver that meets all your other needs and see that at least 200 watts per channel on the side of the box. Only you find out the fine print and discover that says 200 watts is only achievable if you connect a single speaker to it. I like to see about 100 watts per channel or more for most rooms and speakers. Some receivers have preamp output jacks on the rear so you can let it add a power amp to boost the power which is always nice to future-proof things. Bottom line is this, how much power you need really depends on how big your room is and specific type of speakers you're using and how loud you would like to listen to things. Moving on to number four, which is zones. Do you need a second zone? This is also one of the more important questions when shopping for an AV receiver. Offering a second zone allows you to send audio signals to a second room or in the backyard. But the question is, do you need a separate amplifier or simply just a discrete line output for second zone? With many AV receivers, you get the option to assign the surround back channels to the second zone source for amplification of that zone. Now, this is a great way for when you have a 5.1, 7.1, or even 9.1 surround setup and you want to use the extra two amplifiers for something more practical than simply weighing down your AV cabinet. One thing to be aware of is that most second zone budget AV receivers 
don't provide much in the video department. On the other hand, receivers like Denon, Onkyo and Yamaha allow you to send a discrete source to a second zone using a dedicated HDMI output. That's a fairly sophisticated, powerful system. Imagine having a 7.2 setup in your home theater room and a stereo system in your living room all from the one box. Last but not least is one of my favorites. Is it equipped with Dolby Atmos? I'm sure most of you guys know what this is and what it does and hopefully we'll be putting a video together for you guys sometime soon but for now this feature is the latest trend in the receiver as well as the DTSX which is also a new surround sound format designed to make your home theater audio more immersive not unlike Dolby Atmos though. Now, the good news is most AV receivers can play both formats but it also depends on your budget. I personally love this feature and the amazing 3D like sound that seems to hover all around you is just pure magic. There's far too much and too many things to consider when shopping for an AV receiver, especially you want it to be a 4K HDR video format with HDCP 2.2, which personally is a must have. This is the latest copy protection tech designed to stop people from illegally copying video content. Now, automatic speakers calibration is also another thing to consider, but it shouldn't be a deal breaker for you guys. Hope this helped some of you guys. And if you've got any other suggestions, please comment in the section below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more future content. I'm Sarkis and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.